Okay, take it outside, bud. Take it outside. Okay, he's gone in the other room, everybody. This is my chance. The Body by Stephen King. Take 59. It's me, Jess. Uh, if you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you're a regular subscriber, welcome back. Actually, I am filming this video just before I leave to go on a road trip to Nova Scotia. It's a 13 hour drive from Montreal to Nova Scotia and I'm taking my two dogs. And it's gonna be it's gonna be something and I think I'm gonna do a reading vlog there I guess I'll preface this by saying let me know in the comments below if there's anything in this TBR for July that you'd like me just to see me do in a reading vlog and I'm just gonna talk through the books that I'm taking with me the books that I'm currently reading because it's already this first week of July has passed by quite quickly I'm having quite the day today actually because for those of you living in Canada you will maybe be able to relate to this there is a telecommunications fiasco happening at the moment my phone is not working at all I can't make any phone calls I can't receive any phone calls because I'm with a carrier that is being affected by this breakdown of services by this telecommunications company. So it's been kind of an interesting day. I'm considering re-watching a few episodes of Black Mirror. That's where it's putting me in my mental state. Yeah, it's been strange. So that's what's happening today. So yeah, I'm just gonna talk you through some of my current, current reads and then talk you through a couple of the books that I'm excited to read coming up next, hopefully in July. That's what I'm hoping for. This is the book that has gotten me out of my reading slump, everybody, My Policeman. I am really enjoying this book so, so much. I'm not quite finished, so I couldn't include it in my most recent wrap up, but I'm almost finished and it's just a really delightful read. I, I like it because I don't know where the story is going, despite the fact that I know that the premise for the story is that it's based on, it's based on the true relationship between E.M. Forrester and a policeman and that policeman's wife. So far though, in this version or this telling of the story, it's there's not a threesome happening yet. I keep waiting for this to happen, but it's not happening yet. And it, right now it's at the point in the story, I'm almost, I have about a quarter of the book left. I'm at the point in the story where the wife has discovered that her husband's friend, Patrick, uh, I think inspired by Ian Forrester, is gay. And she's putting the pieces together and figuring out. They, they've, just plan they've just planned a trip to Venice together. And so she's thinking, hmm, hmm, I wonder what's happening there. <laughs> so that's where I am with this. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. What a great read. I'll, I'll have more thoughts on it when I finish reading it, but I am loving this book. It's gotten me out of my reading slump, so I can already recommend it because I'm just enjoying it that much. The other two books that I'm still reading, one is Claire Fuller's uh, Bitter Orange. This book is getting more dramatic, which is enjoyable, so I don't want to pass judgment on it just yet, but it had, it did take time to get to something for me and it was I think perhaps it was because I was traveling but I had a little bit of a hard time getting into this one but it's starting to get interesting it's about a couple Kara and Peter who are staying in this house in the countryside and there's another woman staying there named Frances who's doing some work for the man who owns the house and it's about her relationship to them uh, while they're there and it's about her discovering secrets about their relationship essentially but I'll talk more about that as well when I finish it the book that I'm struggling a little bit with at the moment is fresh water which I'm surprised by I didn't think that this book would be as hard for me to get into as it has been I'm about a hundred pages in and I'm I'm still fun I'm finding it a little little challenging to get immersed in I think I need to sit down and just read this book alone rather than reading it in tandem with other books because I tend to have four, four, four or five books going at the same time and I think this one I just need to settle in, spend the day with it as opposed to dipping in. It's not the kind of book that I find it's easy to dip in and out of. 
So I'm not going to pass judgment on it just yet. I need to spend a little bit more time with it and hopefully, because I've heard nothing but fantastic things about fresh water. So I'm hoping it's just a me thing. It's my approach to the way I'm reading it. Yeah, so those are the three books that I'm currently reading. And then I just picked up uh, this book from the library. Like I really need to join another book club, but I just joined this meetup group in Montreal online live like online book club so I'm gonna read Harlem Shuffle and I was thrilled because I was able to find it at the library and gosh our libraries are so well stocked here in Montreal it's quite quite something I, so this is gonna be my first Colson Whitehead I haven't read any of his books Harlem Shuffle and it's about I've just started it it's about a man named Ray Carney who owns a furniture store in Harlem to his customers and neighbors on 125th Street Carney is an upstanding salesman of reasonably priced furniture making a decent life for himself and his family he and his wife Elizabeth are expecting their second child and if her parents on Strivers Row don't approve of him or their cramped apartment across from the subway tracks it's still home that's just, I, I won't read you the whole sleeve, but let me just say that this man, Ray Carney, has a connection through his cousin, Freddie, to organized crime. So already, I've only read the first two chapters and already there's a setup for, like, he moves product through his store. What type of product does he move? Legal product? Illegal product? We're going to find out. And if what I've heard about Colson Whitehead is any indication, then I'm sure it's going to be a rowdy a rowdy ride you could say i'm really looking forward to this because i've heard so many good things about his writing i decided i realized i after doing the mid-year freakout tag one of the questions in the mid-year freakout tag was what book has made you cry and then the follow-up question was what book is making you happy or has made you happy and I didn't really have any and I thought oh my gosh I'm really reading some I tried not to have an existential crisis about it but I guess I read a lot of serious books and I'm quite a serious person so I thought well I better take the summer as an opportunity to read something a little lighter and I haven't read any of this person's books so I thought I would give one a try and I picked up the newest of her books it's Book Lovers by Emily Henry I know that this has been getting a ton of attention but I thought why not it's not usually what I go for but I just wanted something light I was was also having difficulty with my reading like I was in a reading slump and I thought that this would maybe help me out of it and also my manicure matches my manicure matches anyway I'm sure people are not interested in my manicures book lovers is a story about a woman who works in the publishing industry in New York and she leaves the city for a month with her sister to go on a trip to like a small American town so that they can live out some of their some of their bucket list items some of their experiences that well at least her sister Libby says they need to be doing and it's a way for them to try to reconnect because they haven't been feeling connected to one another and there's another character named Charlie who I guess will be the romantic interest who is kind of like her arch nemesis or her nemesis and works in publishing as well and they've encountered one another already a couple of times through work but of course there's all this work romance issue of do you don't you and then there's the attraction because you're interested in the same things so i'm about 100 pages in and it's fun lots of book references but it's very light it's very fluffy and light so just to say I, I can this one is very easy to dip in and out of I can pick it up anywhere and put it down anywhere and it's no problemo it's gonna be a fun one and um, maybe I'll read a couple another one of hers uh, this summer as well if I really like it but I, I don't think so <laughs> it's just not my thing but I am giving it a try in along those lines I decided I would read a horror as well because I'm going out to like kind of the middle of nowhere not the middle of nowhere but like a smaller more remote place for the next couple of weeks so why not scare myself I hope it's scary I don't know if it's going to be scary or not uh this was a Christmas gift the final 
final girl support group. You can tell it's a Christmas gift because I never buy a hardcover. For those of you who watch my channel, I'm repeating myself. But this is by Grady Hendrix and I read it's the Southern Book Club Guide to Slaying Vampires, I think is what it's called, which was fine. It was good. It was entertaining. I, there were some issues with it, which I talked about in my wrap up, but it was, it was pretty good, I thought. So I'm looking forward to reading this. This is about an actual support group for real life final girls. For those of you who don't know, the final girl is the last girl in a horror movie left standing uh, who usually confronts the serial killer or the monster as the case may be. No less. Your cone head is making a lot of noise. And then I don't know if they're just comparing stories or if they end up in a real life situation, but they're real life kids, young girls who've survived massacres and they're, in, they're literally in a support group together. So I know that that's the premise, but I have no idea what happened. That I think will be super fun. Can you not? No, no. Mm -mm. Can, can you take it to the back of the house? Because I'm trying to film here. Never a quiet moment, everybody. Never a quiet moment. In case you're thinking about getting a puppy, <laughs> can I just tell you they're a little noisier than expected. He's so rambunctious. He's like a bull in a china shop. So I'm also hoping to read the novella The Body by Stephen King, a short novella, and I'm hoping it'll be creepy, but it might not be. I'm not sure that it has a reputation for being creepy. If you notice the camera moving, that's because my dog is climbing up the shelf. And I'm just balancing the camera on the shelf. You know, he still has a cone because he had an infection and then, oh man, he's had the cone for almost a month. But I must say that he's doing pretty well with the cone. I talked about it in one of my book hauls. It's the book that the movie Stand By Me is based on. And I loved that movie when I was a kid. It was like, made, it would always make me cry. I love that movie so much. So I'm, I've never read the novella. I've never read the original work, the OG work. Now I'm going to do it this summer and I'm hoping that it's, I'm sure it's going to be really good because it's, it's got a good reputation. At least I think it does. I don't really know what their book's reputation is, but good enough reputation to make a movie out of, right? So, so those are like my horror fluffy light ones. And then this I think is going to be really funny. Actually, I haven't done a book haul, but I did just pick this book up because I just was so interested in it. This is The Netanyahu's by Joshua Cohen. And it says an account of a minor and ultimately even negligible episode in the history of a very famous family. This is about, it's part nonfiction, part fiction. It's real world events inspiring the fictional story. So it's about, it's a, set in winter 1959 to 1960. See Reuben Bloom, a Jewish historian, but not a historian, not a historian of Jews, is co-opted into a hiring committee to review the application of exiled Israeli scholars specializing in the Spanish Inquisition. When Benzia Netanyahu shows up for an interview, fam family unexpectedly in tow, Bloom plays the reluctant host to guests who proceed to lay waste to his American complacencies. Mixing fiction with nonfiction, the campus novel with the lecture, the Netanyahu's is a wildly inventive genre bending comedy for, of blending identity and politics that finds Joshua Cohen at the height of his powers. I've heard this is hilarious. I, I just heard that it's really, really, really funny. It doesn't sound particularly intriguing from the blurb on the back, but I've heard that it's hilarious and a really, really good time. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm thinking about maybe vlogging this one because not very many people are talking about it that I've seen on booktube and I'm curious I think it would be a fun one to, to vlog. Let me know in the comments below what you think. I also want to read one of the books that I picked up when I was in the UK. I'm going to start off with Golden Hill by Frances Suffered. This is about, this is also this is like historical fiction it's about an Englishman coming to New York in 1746. It says, with a suspicious yet compelling proposition, he has an order for a thousand pounds in his pocket that he wishes to cash, but can he be trusted? So it's about New York in its infancy, the way New York was built up, and it's about this character's arrival. It was recommended to me by a arrival and how he establishes himself, I guess, I assume. Uh, it was recommended to me by my cousin. She said it was fantastic. And she and I are sort of exchanging book ideas and book experiences. And so I really want to read this so that I can let her know what I think about it because she recommended it to me and that was very sweet of her. And then the last book that I have on my TBR for 
July is Persuasion by Jane Austen. For those of you who've been watching my channel, you know I'm a little bit skeptical when it comes to Jane Austen just because just I I don't know. I just never have been super excited about reading about these love stories said the British middle to upper class. But I have heard that Persuasion is her best one, although Pride and Prejudice is the most famous one. I have heard that this one is really good. And what I like about this one is it's about a couple who meet. I don't know if it's that they fell in love and then they come back together or if they just... Okay. I was almost finished before that stopped recording. I don't think this is gonna be the same angle. My ha camera has this thing where you have to press the record button on the back of the camera behind, which sucks if you're filming, it just sucks. Cause then you have to, you can't reach, but anyway, you know what, it doesn't matter. Persuasion by Jane Austen. What I'm gonna read for Jane Austen July or Austen July, I forget what it's called. It's her final novel. Listen to this quote though, she does have a way with words. You, you pierce my soul, I am half agony, half hope. I have loved none but you. I mean, yes and no though, like, it's a little bit eye rolly. We'll see, we'll see how I get along with persuasion. I'm giving it a chance. I feel like I will read all of her books just to give them that chance, but you never know, persuasion might be the one that tells me I wanna read all of her books because I enjoy it so much. Stay tuned. It's about, it's about two people in the same social circle that they were in earlier and now they're in again and unrequited love and all that good stuff. I don't think I'm gonna vlog this one, but let me know in the comments below if you want me to. And those are the books that I hope to read in the month of July, which is already almost halfway over. <laughs> so let's see how well she does. I think I'll do pretty well because I think a lot of them are page turners. Nola, do you wanna say goodbye to everyone? Oh my god, you guys, he has a bigger cone because he has a bigger cone because the other cone was too small and he could get to the incision. And he ended up with, because he's so big, he needed a bigger cone. Hope you found that entertaining. If you've read any of these books, let me know in the comments below and I will let you know how it goes and also let me know which ones you want to vlog. And I'll see you there. Bye! Bye! See what I mean? I gotta turn it around to turn it off. I gotta turn it around to turn it off. Look at those nails. Ooh, doesn't it look like seaweed to you? It looks like seaweed to me. I don't know if you guys can see that. It either looks like party streamers or seaweed. <laughs> Vote in the comments below. Party streamers or seaweed? <laughs> Is that TMI? Is that more than they need to know, Nola? I don't even remember where it was. Where was I? The Southern Southern Book Club Guide.